Welcome back. Our next speaker is actually a Hackaday writer, and it's so nice with Hackaday writers living all over the world to finally get to meet him. He is an embedded engineer, and he has worked for the largest tollway automation company in India, but more recently you're going to find him teaching at Centennial College in Toronto. Today he's going to tell you about his vast over-engineering project on Internet of Things. Please join me in welcoming, welcoming to the Hackaday Super Conference stage, Indrapreet Singh, IP. Thank you. Hi. Um, so the Hackaday Prize is something that a lot of people spend a lot of time persevering over that project, doing a lot of research, and takes time, energy, and money. I'm not that guy. Uh, so my eight days before we actually moved from India to North America, um, I had this amazing idea of, you know, let's create a DIY home automation and security system, IoT system, or whatever you can do, uh, to have some sensors integrated over from India to here, and then be able to turn on and off a light and stuff. Yeah, eight days. Great idea. Um, so, I, it, so technically, I just had eight days to design, prototype, install. Yes, the keyword here is install. And test everything. Uh, this includes the custom electronics, the firmware, the software for the connectivity, and also make sure that I don't burn my house down while I'm away. Custom electronics, right? So I unpack part of my luggage. Yeah, um, imagine getting that through customs. Uh, and I pick out a few motion sensors, uh, magnetic switches, relays, starters, um, ESP8266, and some th uh, CC3200 uh, starter boards. Yeah, yeah, why not? Let's make things tougher if they're not already. And yeah, I'll be using Wi-Fi because I can get Wi-Fi routers instead of getting sub gigahertz to work. And the Raspberry Pi would be my gateway. So with all of that you um, extracted and a lot of caffeine, well, I, for somebody who doesn't drink a lot of coffee, uh, so this is what I came up with. Um, I use a dedicated access point in this project, uh, which is not the one that the cable company gives you for the internet. Um, and all my sensor nodes would actually talk to this particular node. Yeah, be you, I could probably do something different. We'll talk about that in a bit. But the Raspberry Pi actually talks to that dedicated access point, And it also talks to some uh, sub gigahertz uh, boards that I already had because, again, let's make things more tougher than they already are. And the Pi would actually talk to the internet over Wi-Fi because if somebody, when I'm not there, decides, oh, this modem is doesn't work anymore, this wireless access point doesn't work anymore, uh, I, when the company says I'm going to change it, my system would still keep on working. Um, and so for the software, uh, the communication happens over REST. Why not MQTT? We'll talk about that in a bit. And um, we're just technically just sending HTTP requests to over from that dedicated Wi-Fi router onto the Raspberry Pi. We're getting some responses. Um, I thought it would be a great idea to learn Python, start with some stuff. Yeah, let's make things more tougher. And with a Flask uh, application, I have a REST endpoints that I can basically use to blink LEDs on and off. Now note that I don't really, I, this is all eight days. Yeah, and then I have to do part of the software to test that the system works. And in addition to that, um, I am using the REST calls from my ESP8. So the ESP8266 is uh, sending signals to my Raspberry Pi asking, do I change my light? No. Do I change my light? No. And I also use that as a live signal. So if somebody happens to, well, truthfully speaking, if something blows up, I know about it. And so this is what the REST call for the user looks like. Uh, it's a simple um, front end. So I can access a URL, set the value to true or false. We're going to try and do that in a bit. And that would allow me to kind of develop the user interface later. Um, there's no database here. Everything is in a Python dictionary. I, find out what, I found out what Python dictionaries are. And then I decided it would be a good idea to use them. And then I found out that I don't know all, all, everything about them. Uh, so with that, this is what it looks like. Day five, I guess. Uh, I couldn't find a model online, so I put something t together. 
I forgot that I was going to use magnetic sensors, uh, so I used super glue, and yeah, it it works a lot better than 3D printing in some manner, I guess. And my mother was not happy with me and when power tools when I started to drill holes in the walls to mount the new system that's going to save our house. And you've got a couple of holes going, oh, yeah, those are actual the concrete walls in India, and we have wires going through them, not beautiful. And uh, there's the PIR sensor, because the PIR sensor is actually mounted on the outside door, and the ESP8266 is mounted on the inside. If somebody plucks it out, yeah, it may not work, and somebody plucks it out, I still get an alert. And there's a uh, magnetic uh, switch uh, there, that brown thing is actually from an old uh, security system, and it kept on working. And the last picture is the make sure don't don't judge me. I had s this at this point. It was just three days left, and I still had packing to do. And there's an ESP8266 connected to relays, and it turns on and off stuff. So where is the Raspberry Pi? Ta-da! It's ugly, but it works. Uh, you can see there are two access points, um, which I had lying around, so I just stuck them on the board. Uh, there's the Raspberry Pi, the primary one, and there's the uh, Enotion board. So if, for the uninitiated, the Enotion is a company that makes uh, sub-gigahertz modules that work off of solar power, and they transmit information on whenever they feel like it, I think. And I've got some information, and it talks over USB, so I've got... Uh, the Raspberry Pi talking to a sensor board over USB. I've got ESP8266 talking over Wi-Fi, and I've got a CC3200 bat, which I haven't shown yet. And all of that stuff talks to the Raspberry Pi. There's a, a Flask uh, software. Uh, there's a GitHub link if you want to look at it and tell me what, what exactly is wrong with it. But it works. Um, OK, so what about the GUI? Well, I'll just show you the demo, because uh, at this point, if you have a REST call that uh, activates the variables inside the Flask server, when the uh, LED, when the lights talk to it, ask, what am I supposed to do? It kind of just, it has a to and fro about it. So let me see if the video plays. Please play. Oh, thank you. Uh, so here, um, there's the website, uh, the web interface. Uh, you click the button, it says light on. Yes, the, the spider webs are for special effects. And you press the button, it turns on the lights. There's a delay because you press a button, it goes across the continents, uh, it registers uh, to a variable inside Python, and when the ESP8266 uh, uh, expires that delay, it says, okay, let's ask me what I'm supposed to do. I'm gonna turn on the lights now. So in that kind of just process keeps on happening. Um, so, oh, hold on. So what next? Yeah, I can improve the software um, and use MQTT. Yeah, well, I tried that. Um, so Eclipse has a project, um, had a project six years ago, which was iot.eclipse.org. They had a MQTT broker available for everyone, so you could you connect to it. And Benjamin uh, KB, shout out to him, uh, he was actually hosting that personally. And when he left, nobody told me. And I had a project that just stopped working. And so this was the initial project, uh, which uses MQTT and it talks to a CC3200. Uh, the URL, it's not local. I'm not, I was using TeamViewer there. Uh, here it is. Um, a similar user interface where I'm using MQTT or uh, in the other one I was using sockets and it talks to the MQTT broker and then transmits stuff online and yet yeah, long story too little time uh, you press a button it goes online MQTT bounces the message onto the CC3200 turns on a light turns off a light dim the light uh, reduced the light, make it brighter, and sort of felt like a great idea at the time, but it was just, I've been turning on and off lights for a long time now. And this was, bam, it, it, it was working across the internet, it was across working, so the reason why I quit on MQTT at that time was because something, sometimes it just stopped working, and now it's called mqtt.eclipse.org, which I googled in the morning to find out why it was not working anymore. But yeah, uh, so that is it. Um, let's, okay. 
if I can connect to the Raspberry Pi. Uh, so yes, yeah, I can use Team. Uh, Raspberry Pi does support TeamViewer, and it has. Uh, this is what the system would actually look like from a local point of view. So you could use, when I run the Flask server, the code is available on GitHub. I'm going to share the link right now. And you can technically use simple REST calls like, yay. So add another NQ, what? Oh, hold on. What, 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 what happened? Uh, it's not showing my team anymore. Why is it not showing my team? Okay. Go back. Hmm. No? Yeah, okay. So the in the in the window, in the terminal window you see up there, that's where you see all the transactions happening. So I can keep a log of things that are going right perhaps and everything that is going wrong. Uh, so that is me turning on and off a light remotely. It, it, the demo is working uh, online. If somebody wants to, I gave the link to a couple of friends and they just decided it would be a good idea to turn on and off my lights in my house when I was sleeping. Uh, so the uh, URL is active. You can try it out. There's a couple of links for the software, for the Python server, the CC3200 code, the ESP8266 code, uh, some C++ code, uh, an MQTT broker code, and the user interface, the HTML and the CSS script, uh, the JavaScript code that runs on the user interface as well. And that wraps it up for me. If you have any questions, please do let me know.